So make sure my trash is empty. Yeah, okay. I got it. Yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, so uh, what was I saying? Yeah, last last class, uh, I was thinking after last class that, you know, there's so many things about branching statements that I wanted to cover. Um, but uh, at the end of the uh, class, or in fact, the entire week, um, I did not manage to cover everything about the branching statements. Um, and then, uh, you know, I, 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 uh, something, I, I remembered something that I told myself many quarters ago, but I've evidently forgotten, is that it is actually impossible to cover everything, right? Uh, and, and then I think teachers basically just have to uh, pick and choose. So also it's running kind of cool for our teachers because, right, we don't have to teach the same thing every quarter. Because uh, if I have to teach the same thing every quarter, it gets boring. I just point you at the videos. But because there are so many uh, different uh, aspects of the, you know, any particular concept to teach, like, you know, take branching statements, um, you know, uh, I could pick and choose like, okay, well, this quarter, I'm going to teach like three of those, right? And there's still a whole lot more left. Um, but that doesn't, doesn't mean that you only get uh, taught about those three concepts. And those three are just example concepts. So I think what um, I think I, and if I'm not mistaken, uh, most teachers you will encounter or you would have encountered in your life um, expect is that um, they don't teach you everything, um, but they'll show you a few examples, right? They'll show, show you a few examples and then uh, enough, enough to basically just uh, develop the taste in you, right? So just to, uh, just to say, hey, you, you can try this too. It's not, it's not uh, poisonous, right? It's, it's not bitter. You can try this too. Uh, and, then, uh, and then once you get the taste of it, uh, I think we just hope that you'll go and find out the rest of it on your own. So I think the goal really with any of these concepts that I teach is not to cover it 100%. Now, even the 100% that's in the syllabus, right? So it doesn't, I, I, it, what the syllabus uh, includes is topics that you should know by the end of the quarter, not necessarily, does not necessarily mean that every single one of those concepts is going to be taught to you. Right, because I mean, the syllabus could say branching statements, but it's impossible, right? It's impossible. You know, I, I, if someone told me they taught me everything about branching statements and I told enumerated all of it, I'm pretty sure I can come up with a, something new about branching statements that they haven't taught me, right? It's like you know uh, the uh, uh, non non uh, uncountability of real numbers, right? Cantor's proof. You can, so uh, if someone comes up and says that's everything about branching statements, no, I can find out something that is not everything. It is, so there's one more. Right? So uh, I think the goal should really be that, you know, uh, going forward, even about looping statements, right? We're gonna do looping statements today, but I think I'm not going to cover everything about looping statements. Uh, you know, touch upon a few interesting aspects of looping statements. The rest of it is for you to discover, because, you know, most of the fun in computer science is in the discovery, right? So you wanna do something and you don't know how to do it, but then you find a way to do it, right? So finding a way to do it, that is where the real pleasure is, right? So, you know, not the real pleasure, but that is where a great deal of pleasure is, you know, finding out. And I don't wanna suck it all away by saying, that's it, you know, this is 100% of the stuff. There's no one, nothing here for you to find out anymore, right? Just, just memorize what I told you uh, and, uh, and there's nothing more for you to find out. But yeah, this is a really stupid kind of class, right? I don't think you wanna attend that. So I'm just going to, uh, in every single class going forward, I'm going to pick up one or two concepts and that will be different each quarter. I think that, you know, especially coming to Zoom and recorded meetings, that's when I started to think more about this because, you know, I was thinking over the weekend too, right? If we're going to do Zoom and keep recording the meetings, uh, what's the point in lecturing, right? So I could just have like five different uh, quarters. I've done five, the same concept five times, right? Go and watch it. Why do you come to class? And ask me, right? If you have any concept questions, ask in Reddit. So, and then I thought it's going to get old, old very soon and I'm going to get bored uh, teaching this. So how do I keep it interesting for me and how do I keep it interesting for the students too? And I think um, this is the answer. I think the answer is not to cover everything. Uh, in fact, to carefully choose topics so that uh, I can uh, cover a topic today in branching statements and I will not cover it for the next several quarters, right? Three or four quarters. I'm not going to, so I'll pick different topics, uh, different uh, subtopics in branching statements to cover next quarter, the quarter after that. And then sometime, uh, you know, later on, this thing that I covered today uh, may become, uh, you know, may s start sounding novel again, right? So maybe there's something here that I can explain in a different way, right? Then that becomes fodder for a new lecture, right? Until then it's just old, old stuff. So um, I think that's what you'll find. Uh, which means that uh, you attend the classes to get introduced to a particular concept and then look at a couple of examples, right? Look, look at a couple of examples. And then 
um, the idea there is that um, that is just a starting point, right? I'll show you the tip of the iceberg. You got to discover the rest of the iceberg yourself because uh, if you base your exams, uh, your preparation for the exams on what I teach you in class, okay? A lot of people, a lot, a lot of students have this misunderstanding saying that the exams and midterms and uh, all these things should basically test them for stuff that they've been given, right? Spoon fed essentially uh, in, in, uh, in modules or uh, booklets or handouts. Um, you know, uh, or lectures saying, oh, this is it, this is it, this is it, right? And the exam will basically ask you for questions. That is not a class, right? That's really not a class as far as I'm concerned, um, right? And uh, yeah, if, if you go, if you go and uh, if you enroll in a class to uh, appreciate Shakespeare, for example, they're not going to go through his complete works, right? Yeah, so oh, modern poetry, modern poetry, right? So they're not going, so, so much poetry, right? So much poetry, they're not gonna look at everything. Um, they'll show you, well, in this genre, here's a couple of representative samples, right? So let's read this and, uh, and as a group uh, appreciate it so we know what to look for, right? Uh, because, you know, there's a lot of stuff to everywhere. We just don't look at it, right? Everywhere we look, there's a lot of joy, but we just don't look at it. We just, you know, glaze past it. We look at, yeah, we think that joy is elsewhere. We keep looking past it. The joy, right? And uh, and likewise, when you go to a class, you know, of course, it's, it's not this. And, and and they'll show you a couple of samples. Uh, but you know, uh, when it comes to exam time, they're not going to examine you on. Well, you know what? Um, what did Emily Dickinson say in paragraph three of this poem? You know, which we talked about in class number five, right? That is total nonsense, right? They'll give you a completely unknown poem, not even written by Emily poem, uh, Dickinson, right? So maybe, you know, and, and say, you know, what do you think, um, you know, about this poem? So, and uh, that forces you to think, right? And then because it forces you to think. Uh, you'll say, well, now because I'm thinking, I can't look for uh, look for stuff that's already been shown to me. Because you know, if I'm looking at stuff that's already been shown to me, I'm not thinking. So when you start thinking, you say, what is it that is not shown to me, right? And then you start thinking, and then when you start thinking, you'll actually start thinking, oh yes, that wasn't shown to me, but it's there. I can see it now. I wasn't able to see it before. I can see it now, <laughs> right? Actually, it's incredible. If you go to the two B Reddit, right, so two B subreddit, and look at some of the uh, comments that students have made, uh, you'll see some incredibly, uh, incredibly uh, interesting comments saying, wow, this was so like brain dead obvious. It was looking, staring me in my eyes, uh, in my face for two full days. And I was debugging this code for two days. I didn't know what to do. I tried every damn thing under the sun. It didn't work. Right. And I thought I just, there's no way I can, you know, pass this mini quest or get better. Uh, and then uh, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, is right there, hiding in plain sight, right in front of my eyes, and I didn't see it, right? And you say, wow, that's it. You know, I've solved the mini quest, right? And, and if someone had told you, like, two days before, um, well, you know what, you're, you're stuck here, and this is the answer, you would never, ever have uh, relished uh, having found the answer after two days of struggle, yeah? So that... That is completely different. And it's not only the joy of finding it after two days of struggle, right? It, it, is, the, it, is, uh, it, is, the, it is not, it is the practice. And also I think the, the, the training of neurons in your head, right? So the fine tuning of neurons to, to look for the right things. Because like I said before, what you're looking for is always there, right in front of your eyes. Whether it is happiness in life or whatever it is, right? It's right there. It's front of you. But people don't see it. People don't see it because they're looking for something else. If you're looking for an eraser and the, you know, and it's right. Yeah, if you're looking for a pencil and an eraser is right in front of your eyes, you're never going to see the eraser, right? Just, just gloss because you're looking for something else. So uh, and so in, in when you're tackling bugs, when you're tackling bugs in programs, um, if you are looking, if if your mind is set, if your mind is set on a what, what week is it? Is it week uh, week five? Right, week five. Uh, week five, yeah, okay, all right, week five, you're going to start encountering some real, you know, not real, real bugs, but you're going to start encountering some non-trivial bugs, okay, let's put it that way, right, some quest five onwards, uh, you'll start encountering non-trivial bugs. It's, uh, until now, what I say, trivial bugs, the trivial bugs are simply bugs with, you know, syntax errors, uh, very, very simple logic gone wrong, you know, looping, you know, missed variable here, so those are easy to fix, right? But when you come to quest six and seven, uh, you're going to start implementing logic, right? Of your own, use logic of your own. Uh, and when you start implementing logic of your own, and sometimes you'll see that it doesn't work. And, uh, and when a program doesn't work, uh, what happens 
And this is exactly the same way in which science also works, right? So it is, it is a power of bias. It is also the weakness of bias. You know, but bias uh, has a certain power. Uh, in helping you find solutions, right? That's called inductive bias in science, right? So when you have a bias, um, you're, because otherwise, if you don't have a bias, um, you have basically what is a uniform distribution in front of you, right? The uniform distribution is that everything is equally likely. If everything is equally likely, you don't have any grounds for picking a particular uh, theory or a particular pebble uh, from a beach, right? So everything is equally likely, right? So the bias is what helps you to, uh, and then, then there's a whole lot of theories in psychology and uh, psychiatry and in medical science and your, so it, 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 how these biases are formed in human brains, right? But, you know, there's a lot of theories about, you know, completely irrelevant phenomena that you observe, right? So in your, in your, your, your morning cup of coffee or a bird flying that you saw, right? So all of these somehow uh, random phenomena create these biases and the bias is what, you know, even if you go to the beach, right? If you go to the beach, uh, it, water is not perfectly calm, right? It's, 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 not a, it's not like a sheet of glass. You know, you see these unevennesses, right? So there's a whole lot of, you know, external phenomena. This is a chaotic uh, phenomenon. The, it, it results in un, undulations, right? Undulations. So, uh, I, I, so things that are completely beyond our control uh, interfere in our mental processing of events and, and, and uh, introduce biases. And biases are basically just these humps in our neural structure, which assigns probabilities to different events. And so sometimes if we are so lucky, um, you know, a bias might be so strong as to actually uh, let you uh, to, uh, to, uh, to focus uh, more of your energies in a place where there's actually a feasible solution, right? Most of the time, if you don't have a bias, you, you're finished, right? You can't discover a solution. So you've got to have a bias. But uh, so that is the power of bias. So the bias leads you towards a solution. If a solution is there, then you know, it leads you somewhere. It leads you somewhere. Instead of infinite points, it basically makes the uncountable space countable now, right? Because there are discrete points which you can check instead of, you know, softness all around. So, so a bias is useful because the bias says you don't have to check everywhere. You can check in these places, right? It still doesn't tell you that, you know, one of these places has a, a solution. It says you can, these places you can check. Now you, at least you have, a, you have a plan because now you can enumerate, so, you know, uh, computationally using traditional computers. You can say, well, I can now enumerate and say check because I have these points. I can say one, two, three, four, because they're countable, right? I can check one of these. And because I have these biases that, that tell me, check here, check here, check here, check here. Because if I didn't have biases, I don't have any, right? So, and then now I have a plan. I have a procedure. If, if the solution exists somewhere in the space, right? Maybe after 3 billion of these uh, points, right? Uh, I, there it is there. But if I follow my algorithm, this is, this is iterative, it's, it's an algorithm. If I follow it one after another, if I keep checking one after another, eventually after 3 billion tries, I am going to find it. Yeah, so, so that is the power of bias. If I didn't have a bias, I, but also the bias is, uh, it has to be looked at, at uh, with, a, uh, with the right perspective. I think that is also a shortcoming and also because a lot of people who didn't have any idea how to solve a problem, meaning that they were looking at the world, the whole world with a uniform distribution, right? They didn't know where happiness was. Everywhere is, so, so they keep laying, they don't, they, right? One after, so so a bias is what, uh, I don't know where we're going with that, yeah, yeah, okay. So once, uh, I, I think what happens is that um, once, uh, yeah, once you discover that there is actually an algorithm, there is an algorithm by which I can find the solution. I just have to try, because I didn't have a way before, but now I can enumerate and try one after another. Bam, bam, I equals one, two, three, four, okay? Uh, I equals three billion, five hundred and seventy trillion, right? There, I got the solution, right? Somewhere down there, a Turing machine, right? So it found the solution. It took a long time, but it found some, but the problem with that, is that because now all of a sudden we have a way to find the answer. Not, not, we haven't found the answer. We just have a way to find the answer. And the way to find the answer is keep trying one after another, one theory after another, right? So that's, and we're, we have, now we get so infatuated and uh, ecstatic saying, oh my gosh, we didn't even have a way to solve the problem. No, we have a way to solve the problem, right? Now, uh, it's important not to get so euphoric about that, saying, wow, we now have, what is this thing called, you know, objective science, which lets us solve, you know, fine. So it's good. It's a powerful tool to have the bias. To, it's a, science is a powerful tool, right, to have in your arsenal. But it's important not to get so uh, unrealistically uh, optimistic about it because uh, a bias could also be deadly right? Because if you have a very strong bias, it could lock you into a particular solution 
and tell you that the solution, the answer you're looking for is there, even though it's not there, but your bias is so strong that it's not letting you move on to the next one. So you're going I equals one, I equals two, I equals three, I equals four, and then I equals 10, your bias is so strong that you're not going to go to I, I equals 11, right? Who knows? Maybe someone's bias is so strong even at I equals one, right? And so they're stuck in the very first iteration of their algorithm and they, the bias is so strong that they say, well, there is no answer. There is no other answer other than one, okay? There is only one answer. The, the only answer is the answer that I see or I, I think there is, right? So this is the only way to find the truth or you know, the answer is only here. There can never be any other answer. So then you know, if, if you're, you're lucky if that is in fact the truth, right? But if you're locked on to a false positive, thinking that there is an answer here, and you focus all your energies there just because your bias is so strong, you'll never ever end up finding the answer, right? You'll be locked there. You'll be, you know, beating your head on a brick wall. You die there, right? And, and so never having found it. So the way to find the answer is to have a bias, first of all, but have the bias in perspective saying, well, you know, I'll never forget what you're looking for, okay? I think that's the important thing, right? Never forget what you're looking for, then the bias will be in check, right? If on the other hand, you forget what you're looking for, then the bias will basically have free reign and say, well, you know, this guy doesn't know what they're looking for and they have this bias. So I'm, the, I'm the bias, I'm gonna drive it, right? So the bias will basically make you feel special, make you feel, uh, you know, put you on a moral high horse, whatever it takes, right? So you're not gonna, it's not gonna let go of you. So I think the important thing is to not let go of what it is you're actually after. So many times I find that, you know, uh, when you're debugging programs, starting from Quest 7, I, I don't know if any of you have got, got to Quest 7 already, um, but if you are, right, you'll find this, right? So I, that's where it first happens. I, in, in the last four years, I've, I've offered questing for four quarters now, right? So in the last four quarters, Quest 7 and 2A is always where this happens. I think people basically just get stuck at one point, and they say, it's impossible, you know, I, I can't solve this. And, and, and they're just banging their head on a brick wall and uh, never get past. I, I actually forgot what I was gonna say there, but uh, I think that's basically what it has, where it starts appearing, that um, you start making theories and then uh, you, uh, uh, you lose sight of what you're trying. Yeah, 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 okay, quest seven, uh, I, I forget, right? So uh, uh, what happens is that uh, in quest seven, because you're, uh, working on algorithms, you're not working on the surface anymore. You're starting to dip, dig deeper and, and you're working in trenches because you're, you're working that, right? And uh, so meaning that you're working in the deeper details, details of it, right? So, so when a programmer um, is working on the deeper details of something, there is a real risk that, um, and it's not, a, not even a risk, it's, it is a reality, right? When you're working in the detail, you cannot have a global view. Right, because you know our eyesight is finite. Either you have a bird's eye vision of the whole world, right, whole Earth, you know, from up there, you know, from from up in Mars or something, or you come all the way down to ground, right? So you know, some some level, and you have you choose the the, the granularity, right? So if you're digging a hole, you're going to be deep down in the trenches, you know, digging. You, your visibility is very, so you can't see the big picture. So in that situation, if you are ever in that situation, right, if you're going to do a startup. Right, two quarters after you finish your 2C, right? If you have a really good idea and you're really strong in 2C and you do some, you know, I'm happy to fund an internship for you. I, yeah, right now I have a bunch of interesting ideas you can work on, you can contact me in two quarters. But, um, uh, but uh, what I'm saying is that if you're ever in a, situ in a situation where you're stuck in a software problem, okay, you only have two ways in which, you know, and then it's a big problem, it's a, it's a big project and you're working in the trenches on a small thing and you're stuck there. There's only two ways in which you can dig yourself out of that, you know, paint yourself out of the corner as it were, right? Dig, dig yourself out of the hole is one, one, the first way is you need to have a manager who does not have local vision, but has global vision. There needs to be one person in the team. There needs to be one person in the team Right? Maybe not even in the team. Maybe of you know of a father or a brother or some friend, right? Or you know who who's able to comment on what you're doing without knowing the details of what you're doing, right? So without knowing the fine details, right? So they need to be able to look at the project from here, but you're looking at the project from here, deep down, right? So that you need to have that someone. Or the number two is that you're uh, good enough at what you do that you have the bandwidth to uh, multiplex your time. And say, well, fifty percent of the time, I'm going to be doing, you know, deep shit in 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 this hole, right? But um, uh, later on, the other fifty percent of the time, uh, I'm I'm going to take a step back and look at the whole thing, the big picture, 
right? And I say, well, I've done all the stuff. Is it helping me get towards the big picture, the, the grand goal? It's, if not, then what I'm doing in, in the trenches is probably wrong and you go and fix it, right? So, and then if you're, if you're in a bug, big picture is what is gonna, gonna come and save you. Yeah? Uh, oh, thank you. Yeah, who said that? Ben. Yeah, okay, well, thank you, Ben. I'm not even talking about looping and so on. So is that, is that okay? Because I mean, that's the only way I can keep it interesting, you know, every quarter, because every quarter, is, it's gotta be different. Uh, I can't be talking about the same thing. Yeah, and now I've lost my uh, train of thought. Uh, what was I saying? Um, yeah, yeah, if, you, if, you, if you're deep, you can't, uh, so what you need to do is set a timer. Really early on in your programming career, it's hard. Oh, hang on. Wow, there's a new site, um, two FBI officers dead. Anyway, uh, why is it ringing? Ah, oh, it's, it's a separate thing. Oh, yeah, 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 notification and the ringing came in at the same time, so I thought the notification was like uh, from the government. Okay, all right. Um, um, yeah, what was I saying? Um, yeah, yeah, so um, if, if you're, if you're uh, deep in the trenches um, and, and, and you have to draw yourself out, early on, early on in our programming careers, um, I think, uh, because working in the trenches is really exciting early on because after a while it, it you know it is still exciting but a trench at a slightly higher level because because it'll all get old right so working in the trenches will get old and the next you want what you want to do is okay well you know let's get some other people to work on the trenches then I'll say what I can do with the stuff that they build right and then one more level you know with the stuff they build right so you can go and build bigger and bigger things and and so um, but early on because it is so exciting to work in the trenches um, you will forget. I think this is the greatest risk that 2A students have, that you will forget that uh, you have to take a break to look at the big picture. If you, because, you know, because, you know, it's exciting and it's natural, right? When you're doing something that's exciting, you completely forget. You lose track of time. So I think in the early stages, that actually helps uh, to, uh, to set a timer maybe every two hours, right? Every two hours, uh, an alarm or timer to say, well, you know, you've been banging your head on this bug for too, too long. Now just take a break. And that's why I say uh, DDA, I think DDA was one of my past students who actually made this first this observation the very first time in the Reddit forums saying, the thing that really helped me was taking a break from all this uh, you know, crazy ass thing that's happening in my uh, uh, IDE and take a break and go for a walk, right? So he went, to, went for a walk and he came back and he found the solution. And he said, that was really incredible. Let me try it again, maybe. And it, and it worked for him uh, repeatedly, <laughs> right? Um, and then he shared it and other people also said, yeah, well, you know, that's a fantastic idea, it works, right? So that is, that is basically, that's in 2C, by the way. It's to be or to see, right? So that is basically essentially going for a walk is removing yourself from the trenches, right? Looking at it from you know the grander scheme of things. This is actually important. This is useful. This is going to help me get the uh, name that I'm looking for, right? Uh, so all of those things you get to ask, and uh, and and as you get as you get you know more and more as you, if you code more and more in the trenches. Uh, then what happens is that you'll naturally start doing that. You don't have to force yourself to set the time because you'll start working faster. Because when you start working faster, um, you finish the job in the trenches really quickly and you have more time, right? That time you'll actually naturally use to say, well, now I can, all the little stuff is done. Let me see if it all you know, gels together well, right? So you will you're yourself be a manager, right? So of your own project slowly, right? And, and so on and so on and so forth. And, and then you, so I think that uh, progression, uh, I, uh, the risk really, I think, uh, is quite recent, I think. I don't think it used to be the case when I was learning to program. Uh, it's only recent, um, I think, because uh, for whatever reason, um, people, uh, uh, you know, these days, and I'm only talking about 20 years, right? This is 20 years uh, from when I was, uh, right? So it, 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 people uh, have a lot less time on their hands <laughs> for whatever reason, right? Even though there's more time, right? Even though there's a lot more time now than it was, than there was 20 years ago, people have a lot less time on their hands. And I think it's because, um, uh, because there's a lot more entertainment. I, th I think that's what it is, right? There's a lot more entertainment uh, and then the entertainment is just eating up into free time. And so people are finding there's less time to do stuff that they actually need to do, right? And, and so a lot less time. And uh, because there's lots, a lot less time, um, people are getting frustrated sooner. And they're looking for handouts, right? They're looking for handouts rather than persevering to find the solution themselves. Uh, and that is really the goal of learning is to persevere. You have, we have to learn to persevere and find the uh, solution ourselves. Um, and uh, I think that is the, uh, yeah, um, 
but hopefully you'll find out, right? By 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 the time you finish two A, if you stick through all the all the way, right, all the quests and finish, and and you will hopefully be frustrated, right? You have to be frustrated, uh, unfortunately. Um, but it is a good frustration, right? Because it is it is frustration that you will overcome eventually, right? And it uh, it will feel good, and the next time it won't be so sharp, and then it won't be sharp. Uh, eventually, it won't be sharp at all. Right, except for really, really badass bugs, right? and and then um, and I think that's the way to be because when you start, when you get employed, uh, when you're working, um, I think the most important thing that uh, coworkers look for, um, uh, or your manager too, right, uh, look for is not the ability to solve problems immediately per se, um, as much as the ability to just remain cool, right, to to take it in stride and and put things in perspective. And uh, usually the people who hurry and rush and, and want to say, I want to get this done. I want to get the answer really quickly. I don't care how I do it. They're the people who ran, land in a soup, right? Because they do it, you know, cut, cut corners uh, where corners should not be cut. And, and, and the program fails miserably in a different situation, which they're really not able to fix at all, right? And that's harder. So it's better to fix the things that you can um, so that you don't have to fix the things that you can't. Right. Most of the time, what happens is that people will not fix the fix they can, not fix the things they can, and eventually they'll end up with a situation where they have a situation where they have a something to fix that they can't. Right. So, um, and then the reality is that if you fix all of the things that you can, you will never have a situation where, where you have uh, something that you cannot fix. And I, that is a thing that we need to avoid, and we'll get there eventually. All right. I think I think a whole lot of us are here now, so we can start class. Today, uh, we won't uh, talk about branching statements. I think, Can I actually uh, say something about, uh, about what you said earlier uh, about biases and, and, su and such? Because I actually think it's, it's very interesting because, uh, you know, when you program, when you program a lot uh, yeah. and you, you develop these biases on, on what to look for, uh, it, it really is. It, 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 you you de you definitely notice that. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah, I know. Like, I've been I've been through it so many times, so I know exactly what you're talking about. Because you, we're so convinced that the bug is because of this, right? Right. Yeah. And, and we'll be saying we'll be say, and that is exactly how a scientist feels. So that's what I mean, right? So that's why I brought up brought up this uh, uh, this uh, an analogy between science and uh, programming is because in programming you're forming the pro programming is really in fact if you you know it is it is it is i think one of the best practical ways of empirical science right it is one of the best ways of practicing empirical science because you know I, and the, this is the reason i say this right because well, how is it, how does science work science work because because we look at nature and we see that there must be a pattern here there is a theory so right we look at lots and lots of examples form an inductive bias right uh, and then say, this is the reason why it happens. And then we've found a reason, right? So because of our bias, we found a reason. And then we check the reason. Hey, yes, that reason is actually right. Because, you know, it's reproducible. It's testable. You can be tested, tested half to halfway across the world, right? In Cairo, it just, in Cape Town, everywhere, right? So it, exactly the same thing happens. So my reasoning was correct. So we found something out. And, 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 we, and in science, in real science, right? In, in professional science. And I shouldn't say real science. Real science is everywhere. In professional science, the opportunities for that very, very slim and far, few, you know, few far between, right? Because you think that you have to be in a lab, you got to be in a, you know, a pro professional setting where people are actually able to write, do these real experiments, you know, uh, astronomy or even chemistry, right? Even at home, it's, in programming, you get to form theories, right? Exactly the same way, but every single time, a program doesn't work, but this is what it's supposed to do. So we form a theory in our head saying, well, it doesn't do that based on the observations of how it's behaving, you know, just like in science, do some experiments, right? Based on our observations, I form a theory saying, well, that is how, that, that is the reason why my program isn't working because that bug exists because of this, right? So we form a theory and depending on the strength of the bias, you're going to be wed to that theory, right? That is going to be a life partner almost, right? <laughs> so, and, uh, but, you, but if, you know, if, if you're not so strongly wed to your bias, then you'll also look at other reasons for the bug and we find it. But like Nate says, you know, I've been in the situation so many times where I've had such a strong bias, right? I've had a, such a strong bias saying, well, I, you know, I run the program and the program does something completely crazy, right? Totally not what I expected. But as soon as I see the output, I, I think I know, right? Because, oh my, I, I say, damn, why didn't I think of this, right? This is, obviously this is what happened. That's why the program is doing this instead of that. That's what I wanted to do, but this is doing, obviously. So I say, I say, obviously, right? The moment I say, obviously that's what is wrong. 
without actually knowing what it is, that means my bias is like super strong. All right, because when I say obviously that's the, that's the problem with my program, that's where I'm going to look and I'm going to, because, because it was obvious, I'm going to look there for 10 hours, right? If I didn't think obviously that's wrong, then I would have looked there not for 10 hours, maybe for 10 minutes, right? And then moved on. But because I said obvious, I'm going to st stay there for 10 hours. And in the end, I get so frustrated. Eventually I say, well, you know, the reason you wasted so much time, the reason you got frustrated is not because of the bug. It is because of your bias. It is because, not even of your bias, it is because of the strength of your bias, right? Because the bias is important. Because if the bias is not important, you wouldn't have found it at all, right? So bias is important, but because of the strength of your bias, right? Many times we make that mistake of uh, giving too much, too much uh, power to our biases. Biases should have power but you know, not too much power. Then too much power, it becomes, <clears throat> you know, like monotheistic instead of polytheistic, <laughs> or yeah, something like that. Yeah, too much, just say, all oh, right, good. I am willing to examine you, um, but you know, I, without, losing go, without losing sight of what the program is ultimately supposed to do. The way I look at it is uh, each, every time you try to look at a problem, it's, uh, this is probably the most, uh, uh, nerd way to look at it but uh, it's like th the problem has a certain cash in your brain for a little bit and that's why it's important to take a break because when you just think about something else uh, that all clears yeah, out yeah. then you can look at it uh completely fresh and it and many times it's much quicker and, and a much more efficient way to solve a problem uh, yeah I, I i think so too yeah thank you right because yeah if down in the trenches yeah exactly uh, and, and then taking a break um it has i think exactly the uh, effect you said yes um, um it works for me anyway right that's why that's why you know when i'm stuck with a bug um i if i can't fix it in 10 minutes um i won't fix it in maybe several hours meaning that after 10 minutes i'm probably not working on it anymore uh, i'll probably take a break do something else and, yeah sometimes i get into that situation where you find a frustrating bug right uh, and sometimes when I take a break, I'm like, oh, that's what caused the bug, right? Yeah. So I think, uh, so one way in which we can bring that uh, thing to bear on our, which I think is already doing, you know, which most of you are already doing, is uh, don't make a Reddit post when you're frustrated. Yeah. Uh, I, I think, uh, but it's, it's a, I don't know, it, it may not work all the time. Uh, sometimes I'll point out, right? I'll point out and let you know. But I think um, posts that you make, or even email you send, right? Anything, anything, anything really, right? Yeah, maybe write it, but save it. Don't post it, right? Or don't email it, right? So and and save it, uh, and then cool down. Uh, all, always do everything that involves other people, right? Uh, or even your own life, or even your future, even if you, anything that is significant and uh, likely to impact you or others in a big way, uh, don't do it when, unless you are uh, calm and settled, right? Because. Uh, if, because you know anything you do you're doing for your own life and if you think you're going to be calm and settled for the majority of your life let's say 90 percent of your life you're going to be calm and settled then your decisions should be made when you're calm and settled yeah uh, <laughs> right but on the other hand if i think i'm going to be frustrated 90 percent of my life right if you decide I mean, for the next for the remainder of my life i've decided that i want to be frustrated for 99 percent of my life right then you should make all your decisions when you're frustrated Right, and then that, those decisions will serve you. You know, keep you keep you frustrated for ninety percent of your life, right? But uh, if you're optimistic and say, well, you know, my life is going to be a cool, uh, happy one where you know I'm just sitting down and not going to be frustrated, then it is very important that all your decisions you make uh, are also made during a mind mindset that matches the ninety percent of your life, not the mindset that matches ten percent of your life. Is, is that okay? Can we, can we, uh, uh, I, I need someone to pick up the screen, obviously, right? Uh, hopefully someone who hasn't done, uh, been here before. Uh, I see a couple of names here. Uh, I don't know, uh, Devon and uh, Tina, um, Uxi, I don't know. Yeah, maybe Uxi has been here. Uh, Tom, Tom, you've been on screen before, haven't you? But Tom's not even here, apparently. He's logged in and gone. Tom? No, I'm here. I just, okay. My work scheduled a meeting during oh, this meeting. class today. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Okay. Someone else, someone else. Uh, maybe uh, Tina or uh, Devonan could take the screen. And um, uh, hey, uh, Devonan, how would you like to be called? Is his full name or Dave or? Um, I just go by like Dave or Dev. Okay. Uh, I don't really have much. I mean, I've been listening. I just don't have much interesting to say. 
No, you know, you, nobody. So I don't know. Uh, the people who've been coming up here, uh, we don't expect anyone to come up on screen and have something interesting to say. The way it works is you just take the screen and then I'll call out code or some of, some, someone else will call out code and you type it in and we'll just experiment together. That's how it works. Uh, you don't need to come up here and share something already. You can come up here with a blank editor. All right, let me open mine up. Great, great. Uh, so Dave is going to share his screen. Uh, share share oh, your browser. I'm share using browser. a different, I use different uh, computers for this. So I have my, I have a, I have a small laptop that I'm in the call don't with. Don't worry, and just go to a browser. Can, do, can you share, do you have a browser? Uh, yeah. Yeah, just open a browser and go to ripple.it. We'll just go down Ripple.it. Can't be, oh wait, hold on, it's not. Uh, uh, it just says it's IT security and support. It, it doesn't. Are you on a Mac? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I think someone, uh, someone uh, last quarter or a couple of quarters, uh, no, not like a couple of lectures ago pointed out. I think because you, I'm recording, I'm recording the screen uh, and you're sharing your screen with me, your Mac security is set to not uh, allow that to happen. But they found, a, they found a setting in your firewall. You can punch a hole in your firewall or Zoom, something. In your settings in your Mac, you should be able to allow Zoom to share your screen. Uh, all right, you'll have to give me a moment for that. Then. Okay, okay. But you said you have two environments. Two environments. Two, two computers. Yeah. What about the other computer? Does it have uh, a problem? Yeah, I could probably share my screen on it, no problem. Um, and in the meanwhile, whoever it was, you know, who used a Mac that had the firewall block. Um, I actually, I actually did. I'm looking through my security preferences right now. Uh, I'm oh, trying right. to figure cool. out where, where I set it. Um, Give me a moment. All right. Actually, yeah. I know it's in privacy. I'm just looking through all the permissions. Uh -huh. Hey, Tom. <laughs> yeah. All right. Tom says our class is more exciting than his work meeting. Great. What we should do is basically, you know, stream our stream our class so that Tom could project it on the, <laughs> in, the, in his meeting room, so everybody could learn C plus plus. I'm just kidding, but it, 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 I think it should be fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, go go to privacy uh, under files and like right below files and folders. There should be screen recording. Uh, it's this. Uh, oh, I'm just going to my other computer. It basically looks like the Target logo, and uh, you click uh, click the lock, uh, enter your password, and then uh, click the check mark near Zoom, and it should work. Hey, uh, Nate, what's the OS X version? Um, uh, I am on uh, I'm on Big Sur, but it should work on Catalina uh, as well. Oh, you're on Big Sur. Uh, I'm still yeah, on yeah. Sierra, so uh -huh. yeah, yeah, ten thirteen. So that's why I don't get that error, but. Uh, yeah. But for some reason, uh, my Mac is not even auto updating. So um, I got to look into that. Maybe I don't have I, enough disk space. I just never update it. I, I don't know. I moved I my, it'll probably work anyways. I moved from my 128 gigabyte Mac because I, I couldn't get, uh, I, I needed Big Sur uh, to install Xcode for, for another project. And uh, so, and I didn't have enough disk space for that and for, uh, for Big Sur. So I got a new Mac. Uh, with Big Sur, and uh, and that's how it got Big Sur. But before I, I used to have uh, High Sierra on this oh, tiny okay. little 128 gigabyte uh, Mac that I I kept having to just delete stuff like really important stuff just so that yeah, I could do other yeah. things. Yeah, it was uh, it was a nightmare. I see. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe the iMac in the other room. Uh, we'll, we'll... Oh, I, I, I was able to share my screen uh, without any issues on the other. Well, I'll go and take a look. Hey, uh, Dave, what's, what's going on?
Dave? Okay, what, well, you know, well, you know, maybe Tina can do it while, you know, both, both Tina and Dave, one after another. Uh, hey, Dave, you're here. Uh, all right, so let's see. Great, great, okay. Um, <clears throat> all right, so here's what we'd like to do. Um, sharing the screen, why can't, yeah, all right, so, great. So here's what we'll do. Um, we'll do a couple of simple loops, loops. And I'll also introduce, uh, as, you know, seeing as it's only 8.45, we've got a whole hour. Uh, so what we'll do is uh, I'll introduce loops. Uh, we'll play around with loops a little bit. And um, this, uh, then there'll be a whole lot of variations of loops that I'll leave for you to discover, right? And share in the Reddit forums and so on and so forth. Hey, there's another way of doing a loop and so on and so forth. You can do that. Um, and, but then um, as soon as we do that, uh, I, uh, we'll, we'll talk about arrays, okay? Um, and um, the reason I say that is because once we have loops and arrays uh, at our disposal, we can we can actually start working on some interesting stuff, right? We'll do some interesting stuff today. Yeah. Yeah, actually, we can implement a very simple game. Something like that, okay? So we'll, we'll, we'll think of ways, we will think of things that we can do today that you should be able to take away and, and play with your friends. Play with your friends, you know, family, uh, whoever, right? So you should be able to play this. Um, or show, show at least, some, something interesting. Okay, all right, let's do a very simple loop, okay? Let's say I wanna print the first 10 numbers, okay? 10 numbers uh, of the, uh, not the yeah, first 10 uh, positive numbers, okay? From one to 10. So here's a very, very simple way I can do that. I'll show you a, different, a bunch of different ways in which we can do it. And then you'll, and then in say, then we can try and fiddle with, uh, you know, more uh, things to do. All right, here's the simplest possible way. Uh, so uh, you just type in what I say. So four, <clears throat> space, uh, you know, indent four, indent, indent four spaces in, four spaces in, yeah, four, no, not four, uh, four, yeah, and uh, uh, no, actually, you're hitting tabs, are you hitting tabs? So, uh, it's just be four spaces. What so, a tab is four spaces, just letting you know, so just press tab once. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. That's what I did. Great, great, okay, so, so there you say four, four. F-O-R. F-O-R, thank you, Chad. Okay. No, not you are, but F-O-R. F-O-R. I, I've been using these for quite a while, so. Yeah, sure. So, uh, size for oh, int. Chad can talk you through this. Chad, Chad, yeah, yeah, please talk him through this, yeah. Int. And let's use size T and I can, you know. Uh, uh, remember, uh, use parentheses. Yeah, let's use int. No, I mean, no, before the int. You need to, for int I. I was saying I. Int space I. Uh, I think Chad means int space I. Yeah. Uh, you need a parenthesis after the four. four. Yeah, otherwise it won't work. Four. And then inside the parentheses, you say int space I, int space I. Equal then a semicolon. Um, no, I, at first you need equals zero. Yeah. Int I equals zero. This is a standard format, right? So four. Uh, int i space equals space equals space zero and then semicolon yeah and then space i is less than 10 semicolon i plus plus Close the parentheses. Close. Close parentheses. And, and the next line, on the next line. No, no, no semicolon. No, 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 no. Uh, next line, open curly bracket. No, oh, all right. Let's, uh, uh, hey, Chad. Uh, thank, thank you. Uh, right? So let's try without the curly. Then we'll introduce the curly next, uh, in the next graph, right? Uh, now, indent four spaces in. Now, what we're typing is part of the loop, right? Part of what needs to be repeated 10 times. So this needs to be part of four. So uh, the way in C++, we indicate that something is part of something else, something is owned by something else, is to indent it in. We usually say it's hanging off. So we want to indent it in by four spaces, and everything there is going to be hanging off the for statement intuitively, okay? So four spaces, put four spaces there. Yeah, okay, and then you type, std double colon std double colon double colon c out yeah and space and then left shift yeah left shift two times 
Yeah, space, space, left shift, yeah, left shift, yeah, left shift, space. And then quotes, a single quote, a double quote, double quote, start double quote. Uh, I space equals, or I space is, I is, I is, right? Say I is, I is. No, no, don't get rid of the equals so that people don't, uh, we don't confuse it with an operator. Say I is, yeah, I is, and then space. Yeah, and then outside of the quote, outside of the quote, uh, on the same line, yeah, uh, yeah, space, and then, and then two, two insertion, two, two, uh, yeah, just sh left shift, left shift, yeah, I, and then space, left shift, right, yeah, left shift, and then uh, space, standard colon and L, STD, double colon, and L, okay, so that is a completely functional program. Right. Thanks to Chad. Um, that was, oh, you need a semicolon. You need a semicolon at the end of the end of. Right. I, I believe that is what Chad would have, um, you know, talked you through um, to the end. You need a semicolon at the very end. Yeah. So, oh, you do have it. I didn't see it for some reason. I think it's really fast. Oh no, you don't. Do you need a semicolon? You need a in the, yeah. In, do in, you need... Sorry. Go ahead. Do you need a semicolon at the end of you know four? on the very end of line five uh yes no in fact that is a very common uh, gotcha uh many people may actually accidentally put <laughs> on there and uh and then it won't work at all um and then you find out what's well, so the 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 issue there is that a semicolon is a valid statement by itself in c plus plus and in c uh, even in python any other language right so, uh, maybe not but right i don't know about that it's uh, many languages a semicolon is a statement by itself and that statement, a semicolon, is a statement that says, do nothing, <laughs> right? So you could have a statement that says, do nothing, and it's, a very, it's just a semicolon. Now, the, the problem there is that if I put the semicolon at the end of the for loop, right? So uh, before we run it, put the semicolon at the end of the for loop uh, uh, on line five, put the semicolon at, at the end of line five, right? Right, now, uh, now uh, what happens is that the way the compiler is going to look at this code, now, we look at it differently, right? And, and by the way, this is very dangerous. Again, this is a very dangerous, like the dangling else and branching statements is very dangerous when, when a programmer likes, like, writes, writes like this because the visual presentation of the program is, is, a, is a contradictory to the functional. The, 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 what the compiler sees is very different from what the human sees, right? And it's dangerous because humans can never see the bug if it's like that. Right, so I'll tell you. I'll let me let me reformat. Let me reformat what's on screen right now to what the compiler sees. Okay, and then I'll explain what is going to what the compiler will translate this to as. Right. So now what the compiler sees is go to the end of line five. Go to the end of line five. All right. Go left arrow. Left arrow one time. No left 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 arrow. No 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 not not that. You know press the left arrow. Go go to the left of the semicolon. To the left of the semicolon. Okay, now hit enter. Okay, now indent the semicolon in four spaces. Okay, no, 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 yeah, four, yeah, four spaces. On the next line where you have the C out, on line uh, seven, now indent it back, uh, re unindent it four spaces. Okay, this is what the compiler sees. Okay, what this means is that for I, starting at zero, all the way to 10, incrementing once each time, for each iteration, do nothing, okay? So you'll see the for loop. I see. Zip through in in you know in in a, in, a, in a blink of an eye, but it won't do anything. All it's done is basically incremented i, and even that i incrementation is useless because i was a local variable only even inside of the for loop, right? Because you see, it's scoped for the for loop. It's not globally scoped, or it's not even you know block scoped. So it's so it's basically a useless statement. And most likely, what happens is that in many situations, with reasonable compiler optimization, the compiler will look at it. And basically, uh, either if, if the compiler is good and you have your warning set, it'll tell you, hey, I warn you here, that you got a statement in your program that is not going to do anything, it'll warn you. Or if you, know, if you don't have your warning set and you're like super duper confident that you're this programming cat that you, know, you don't need warnings for the compiler, the compiler will say, oh, fine, the guy knows what he's doing, right? I'm just gonna compile it into code. And in fact, since that code is not gonna do anything, I'll just move it, right? It'll I want to optimize it out. In fact, your object code, the binary, the machine instructions won't even have the, your first statement there. Right? It'll only have the C out because that's been optimized out and you'll never see it. And the compiler thinks, why well, it's not going to do anything and they're going to run the program and they're not going to see, see the difference. The compiler will take it out. 
right? So, uh, and you won't see it, and and so it's a cause of uh, you know great quick, deal. quick yeah. question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is Ben. Um, so you you mentioned about hard coding. Um, I know coding is kind of hard <laughs> as a beginner. Um, I know that you're supposed to have include IO string on top and using namespace STD and also return at the bottom. Um, mm -hmm. In this case, can you explain why it's not needed? We do need to return. We haven't finished it yet. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put, put, the, put the return in. Put, put the return in. Because we declared int to, you know, a main as returning an int. Uh, what was the other thing you said? Uh, no, not there. Uh, the return is not part Everything of Everything on top. Uh, at the end, uh, no, no, line seven, line seven, on line seven, uh, put the return, uh, indented four, four spaces in, four spaces, yeah. Return, zero, right? So the exit state, zero, right? So. I wonder why you need it. What happens if you don't do it? If you don't do it, the compiler will say, hey, you told me that main is supposed to return a value, but you're not returning a value. Yeah, so you don't I mean, what if you say void main? Yeah, in C++, uh, it does not accept a void main. Um, maybe I don't know. In some other languages, uh, main can be void, um, but I think if, if I can get a link to a code one time, that would mm -hmm. be pretty. You know, maybe I can go try that. We can, we can try that. You know, I void main will not compile. To turn turn main into a void right now, try and compile it. We'll see the error well, right here. I mean, you know, I mean, it's kind of good to experiment. See, I mean, it's like a two minute experiment, right? So no, before you compile it, just turn. Uh, yeah, yeah, run it without debugging first. Run it without debugging. Right, run it. He didn't say. Uh, hmm? No, it'll oh, compile no, and no, run. Sir. Okay. It'll compile and run. Oh, uh, where do you have an error? Oh, you haven't included IO stream. I'm sorry. So right at the top of the program, you have to say hash include IO stream. Uh, and probably include uh, or use namespace std. Uh, no, because we are explicitly qualifying endl and c out. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 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 put the blank line after the include, not before. You got a blank line after, uh, before, make that after. Yeah, okay. I think that kind of makes it easier to read your code, right? Well, what makes it easier? You know, include spaces after certain things, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it's just like an English essay, right? You can't, you know, if you submit an essay, that's one monolithic paragraph right, to your teacher, she's gonna say, hey, you know, take it back, you know? Um, you gotta break it up. All right, so uh, run it, it, it this'll run, this'll run. Oh, why, does, why do you still have the underline under the C out? I, I don't understand. But, um, why, uh, what's, what's going on here? I can't see uh, what's all that blue stuff. Wait, why don't you Oops. just import, I mean, using STD instead of, instead of having to type STD? Yeah, 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 sure. Uh, Susanna, I'll get you in one second, okay? Hey, uh, hey, uh, uh, Dave, you don't see the output because you're clicked on debug console. Don't click on the debug console, click on terminal. No, 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 no terminal. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Okay, that's the output of the program. So if you run it now, that's the output you'll see, right? And that's what you printed, yes? Yes or no? Nobody's answering. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, Susanna and Nate said yes, but not uh, the person who's coding, uh, Dave. Yes or no, Dave? All right. He's yes. Okay. Hello. I can't hear you. Mic issue. All right. Okay. Good. All right. No, don't worry. I can. We can see you. All right. So good. Uh, and then I forgot what uh, Susanna said. Uh, go, hey, go back to your code. What happened to your code? Okay, all right, uh, so uh, Susanna said something uh, and I forgot. Uh, you could save a little bit of effort if you just you put uh, using namespace std under hashtag include, so you don't have to keep typing std and then the colons every time. Using, using, using. Using, using, using. Using. Uh, using. Space. Uh -huh. space, namespace, std, and then colon. I semicolon. Mean, semicolon, semicolon, semicolon. And enter, enter, enter. Yeah. Enter blank line, yeah, good. And then you could get rid of the std before all the others, and you don't have to keep on typing it.
great. Great. Now you should run it, run it, run it, run it. We're going to go do a whole bunch more changes and experiments, okay? So run it. Let's make sure, sure it works. So it works, yes? Yes or no? Yes, okay. All right, good. Now, uh, under the for statement, uh, under, the, under the C out statement, uh, let's put another C out statement, right? So say uh, C out uh, 10i equals um, 10i is, C out 10i is 10i is, yeah, uh, space, space, and then double less than, uh, outside, 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 you know, left shift. No, no, you need the space there. You need the space there. Yeah, okay. And then uh, left shift, left shift, 10, uh, and then within parentheses, you say 10 times i, 10 star i. Yeah, and then end all at the end. Right, now, what is this going to do, right? So this, the visual presentation of this program tells a fellow programmer that inside the for loop, uh, it is going to print i, and then it's going to print 10i, right? Uh, so it's going to print 1, 10, 2, 20, 3, 30, right? In our mind, the visual presentation tells us that's what it's supposed to do. Yes or no? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I, I can hear you. Hey, Dave, you fixed your mic? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what happened. Great, great. Okay. Yeah. So the, the visual presentation of this program uh, tells us, like, for example, if it was Python, yeah? Uh, visual presentation says inside the for loop, um, we're going to do, um, we're going to print uh, i, 10i, then i plus 1, 10 times i plus 1, right? So basically, you know, uh, 0, 0, 1, 10, 2, 20, 3, 30. That's what we should see. Yes? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So run it. Run it and we'll see if that's what we see or not. You can actually increase the size of your um, the, the bottom console. You can drag it up. You can drag up the middle line. Yeah, I'm getting it. Oh, you're getting an error. Okay, okay. All right. Uh, yeah, you know what? Uh, you know, no, no, no. Before we make any changes, uh, don't. Uh, yeah, it's, you see where you say int i equals zero here, right? So um, just make that i equals zero, not int i equals zero. Right? And, uh, and it says after, I after, zero. After I minus zero. It doesn't yeah, up there, thing. up there, you say int, uh, up there, yeah, yeah, in line, in line six, line six, line six. Yeah, the, there you can say int i equals zero, maybe there. Int i, oh, you know, initialize it to zero. Int i equals zero, semicolon, i equals zero. No, no, you don't need parentheses there. That, that's a dash, that's not an equal sign. I, yeah, 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 we'll fix it. i space equals zero. Is that, is that an equals or dash? That's, that's an that, equals. That's what? Me. Yeah, yeah. What? Hit control like plus. Hey, hey, Dave, hit, hit control plus one time. Command plus or control plus. Uh, unable to write in the user settings. I don't mm -hmm. know why. Not letting me zoom in. No, no, no. Can, can, no, control plus isn't working? No, it's not working. OK, all right. So hitting hitting and I get the hey, that's an equals. I can see the equals. Right? Hit the semicolon. 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 Enter. Enter. Okay, now you won't have the error, but the program is still not work, right? So that's good. Um, you, should, you should be able to run it now. You want the second C out in like, go with the first C out? Yeah. Uh, I'm and sorry, uh, uh, someone something. said something? Oh, I, I mean, um, the second C out, you, you want it inside the for loop, right? Yes, we want it inside the for loop, right? Oh, okay. But, yeah, uh, so, braces. yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, here, the visual presentation, if, especially for Python programmers, I think, right? For Python programmers who don't use braces and use indentation, um, this is, you know, the both of C outs belong to the four. So that you need to be careful about. Uh, here, only the first statement belongs to the four. If you want more than one statement to belong to the four, you need to put them all in a black in a block. A block is between curly braces. Everything between a curly brace, between curly braces, masquerades as though it's a single statement. So we can turn this into what we want by putting a brace after the after the uh, squiggly, uh, after the four, after uh, at the end of the four line. At the end of, yeah, put a bit space and a space and a brace. Yeah, and then uh, after the second C out, enter. Yeah. I'm going to put this at the end of the second C out. That should be at the end of the second C out. All right. Put it on the next line uh, to be cleaner. All right. Yeah. And then get rid of the blank lines and, uh, yeah, get rid of the blank lines. 
Now you can also put the int i equals zero, right? You can make the int go inside of the for loop too. You don't need the int out there. And then get rid of line six, get rid of line six. Yeah, triple click and delete that. Yeah, and then make the int, yeah, int, 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 int inside the for loop where you had the int originally, put the int there, put, put the int back there, inside the for loop. There, 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, I think you have a space before the int. Okay, now uh, what we just did here, uh, we're not going to go into the details, but someone uh, hopefully should chime in either in Reddit or in the YouTube video uh, saying uh, why we had to remove the int from the for um, statement to up there in order to get that, you know. Is it because we already declared it? I think I think I remember, yeah. It's with yeah. namespace, so, right? It's, so. No, not here, not here. Don't, don't, just, let's not discuss it here. Discuss it in the forums or in, in, in the video or on Reddit or somewhere, right? So, say why we did that. What was the purpose, right? So why we did that. So we can talk about that. All right, so now if you run it now, you'll see that it does the right thing. Right, it'll print zero, zero, one, ten, two, twenty, and so on. Yeah. So, yeah. all right. So, so that's good. So now I'm going to show you uh, another way to do a loop, right? Uh, a, a loop without using a for statement, right? So this is a for statement. Let's try and do the same thing with a with a while statement, right? So erase the for part, right? The, everything, everything from line six to Nine, erase it. Hey, leave the return. Yeah, yeah. Now let's do the same thing with a uh, while statement, right? So, so you have a hmm? Yeah, you any point getting hmm? Yeah, leave the return. Go up. Uh, yeah, line. Yeah, line six. Okay. So while um, does not let you scope the counter variable inside the loop. So the, if you're using a while. Uh, you have to scope the counter variable outside. So for that reason, what I do is anytime that I need to use a loop, which uh, has a counter, right? A counter variable where, where, I, where I have to use ij or something like that to you know, keep track, um, I don't use a while loop, I use a for loop, right? Uh, sometimes you have situations where you have to loop where you don't have a counter, right? The situation where the, the condition where you break out of the loop is not determined by a counter, but rather by a program state, right? So you while um, you, you stay in the loop, until the time when um, when uh, a switch has been flipped, right? While while the task has not been done, keep doing it. So those are situations where a while loop is actually better than a for loop, right? So in fact, that's why the if you think about it, that's the reason why we have chosen the words for and while. If you think about it, that's exactly the meanings of these. You know, for means you want to do it for a certain period of time, right? While means do it while it is true. So if, if you look at it from that perspective, everything makes perfect sense, right? So while is when you cannot identify a counter variable. This is a finite discrete number of times, then use a while. Uh, it works out beautifully and your program will be a hundred times more readable, you know? All right, so let's do this with a while loop using the non-intuitive way, right? Using a counter variable. And I'll show you how to do it without a counter variable too, right, later. Right? So, well, so you say int i equals zero right there at the top, right? Say int, let's use a different variable, int k equals zero, right? So int, int k equals zero. No, no, you, no, no parentheses. You know, we're just de declaring int k equals zero. Yeah, okay, semicolon, enter. Enter. Uh, one more enter. This is a new paragraph. We're going to just start the body of the program now, not the declarations, right? So now you say, while k is less than 10, while k is less than 10, well, yeah, but you have the condition, right? Just like in the four, the condition needs to be in, 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 inside a parenthesis. Yeah. While k is, k is less than 10. Yeah, and inside the body of the loop, uh, again, try a single statement, then we can put the braces into a date and try and try, try two statements, right? So uh, yeah, so your curly, curly brace, no, not curly brace, next line, next line, next line, indent four, st uh, four steps, four, four, four spaces. Uh, I say C out, uh, C out, um, you know, um, left shift, K is, yeah, within quotes. So, this is very good, uh, very good, Dave. Yeah, I mean, you're. Um, I'm, I'm just comparing what you're typing now to your uh, uh, to the speed at which you were typing when you first started, like uh, I don't know, half an hour ago. Uh, and I think half an hour ago, um, I think it wasn't as smooth as I'm seeing now. 
is it is it do you find it actually easier now to type and uh, and follow along now that you actually did a bit of this mm, yeah i mean yeah, it's see, a little I, more familiar yeah <laughs> uh, so there you know that's a very good um uh, example for the other students who are uh, fearful right so if you haven't had a chance to come up on screen and type you know take take a look at did they i even as you're typing you know things get easier and by the time you're done you know programming will be you know not not so challenging for you after that okay so k is in the space uh, space and then you know outside the course you say left shift and k and then endel and all the all the stuff that you did before right no no not not another c out there you just say k Oh, oh, you forgot oh, to say, okay. that's why you were typing C out. Yeah. And then you don't need, uh, yeah. Then, and then you say, uh, I'm just typing K really. That's it. Hmm? I think that's what you did. The first time it's you the did the variable it. name. That's why. All right. Yeah, yeah, you, you're outputting K. K. You, you remember previously you were outputting I there. Mm -hmm. You said I is, and then left shift. I. Yeah, it's just the, okay. Now you do end out. Right. Now you should be able to run it and it'll work. Except instead of I, you should say K. Yeah. Yeah. Did you run it? I'm running it now. <laughs> hey, there's uh, a ooh, okay. ooh, I forgot. Right, kill it, kill it, kill it. Uh, you All need right. to uh, you need to do like K plus plus, that's why. Yeah. You need to so, uh, add just okay. right click on, on the terminal and, and there should be a, there there should be something that says stop code run. Yeah, it's already stopped. It's already stopped. Yeah, you can just stop. Is it? I'm pretty oh, sure okay, it cool. stopped already. Yeah, it's oh, stopped. Okay. It. It stopped. It stopped. Okay. Um, so uh, where you have uh, K left shift and L, turn that K into K plus plus. Okay. Run it now. What's going uh, on? No, I think, uh, I think you need to. That's from, that's from, no, no, this no, is, no, this no, is from no, before. No, this no, no, no. This is, you're looking at the old output. No, no, no. I know that. I know that. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. So that worked, right? Yeah, it worked. Yes, yeah, that's here. correct. We're going to do something. We're going to do something here and see a change, OK? Someone uh, remember uh, the exact numbers that are output here. What is the first line? What is the first line that was output? It's zero. OK, and what's the last line? Nine. OK, all right. Now change the K plus plus to a plus plus K. Uh, all right. Okay, now run it, now run it. Oh, huh. Right. So um, this is very interesting, isn't it? Uh, so it's that's one the difference. 10 now. Yeah, so that's the difference between a plus plus when it is used prefix versus when it's used postfix. Right, it's a very subtle difference, but it's an enormously important and incredibly important, you know, a, a useful difference. It is so useful that after C came up with this semantics for the plus plus uh, before prefix and postfix, it's now it's, ever since then has been part of every single language. Right, you see that in Java, you see that in actually does Python have plus plus? Yeah, I, I, I forget. Does Python have plus plus? Oh, and does Python know, program is here? I don't know. No, Python doesn't have. Okay, yeah, maybe Python doesn't have plus plus, but plus plus is such a uh, an incredibly useful operator. It's not only just a, it's, it's, you know, the reason for plus plus is there's it's not just it's syntactic sure and you know the eye candy. The plus plus is also an incredibly efficient operator at the machine level, so that if you have a plus plus, the compiler is able to translate that into a, an increment. In, because increment is actually a machine level assembly instruction, right? It's, it's a machine instruction. There's one machine instruction to increment a value. So the compiler can translate a plus plus into bam like that one one instruction right nanosecond bam like that so uh, so plus plus is uh, that's why even if you do i equals i plus one the compiler will internally translate that as you know i plus plus you know I've never seen uh, plus plus actually be used before uh, like plus plus k I I always saw it as k plus plus I've never uh, I, I didn't know you could do uh, plus plus k. Yeah, that looks actually so funny. the difference between the two and I think the difference between the two I would hope that someone could. Um, 
there's a whole bunch of videos on YouTube where I talk about the difference between the two. There's a whole bunch of videos where we work through the examples, examples showing the difference between the two. We did that last quarter, okay? If you look at the videos from last quarter, you'll see the difference, right? The difference is that plus plus before the operator means the, the increment will happen before the entire expression is evaluated, right? Um, so before the C out happens, the plus plus is gonna happen. If you have the plus plus after, that means the CO2 will happen and then the plus plus will happen. So that is a difference, okay? And it's such a simple and subtle difference. It's a very subtle difference, right? It's, and, 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 but it makes a world of difference to your code sometimes, right? So that's something for you to discover and relish on your own. All right, so those are two of the operators. Uh, so while loops, for loops, uh, I'll, yeah, I'll leave, I'll leave you to discover the remaining looping structures and different versions of loops. But what we'll do now is I'll talk about what time is it now? Uh, it's 9.15, right? So we have a half hour. So I want to introduce arrays. Uh, so uh, I want to talk about arrays. Now, unless, unless you guys want to try some other experiments with uh, loops, that's fine. Well, you know, do you want five minutes to just experiment on your own with uh, loops? You want some, someone, someone could call it a problem, uh, someone, and, uh, and Dave or maybe Tina could take over, right? Um, type it out and, um, and try it out. Well, I have a question. So um, yeah. I'm, well, actually, I should just share again. Um, so do I have to include math for it to recognize this, uh, the greater than or less than symbols? The, no, 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 it's, it's part of the language. It's a, yeah. Really? Because I'm running, it's also, I have it at 45, so I'm running this. Uh, what is it, uh, what, is, what is that? What is the symbol? This? Oh, oh um, I, I don't even know. I, I, did I get if it you wrong? Wanted, if you want to do that, you just need to do, you need to separate the Less than or equal to. Oh, Sorry, you want less than or equal to? I, I, I couldn't yeah. see that. Yeah, yeah, it says less than and then equals. You have to type less than and then equals. Oh, less than and then equals. And then equal, like. No, no, it has to be. It? No, they, they have to be stuck together, I think, yeah. Like this? Yeah. Same, same with the greater than or equal to. Oh, uh, okay. All right, well, that's that was the good question. Experiment. That was a very good experiment. Thank you. Thank you for running that. Um, do you guys want to do more experiments like that? Yeah, yeah this is fine. We don't have, we don't have to talk, talk about arrays until Thursday even, right? We didn't do that arrays on Thursday. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Maybe you want, yeah. Hey, hey, uh, hang on. Wait, wait, wait. Um, wait, is this week five? This is week I five? I think week four. Mm, this is week five. Or maybe six. I know this is definitely not week four, though. Week oh, it's not week four. Five. I don't think we're. Oh, 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 the content. No, I'm talking about right now. Like, oh, well, week. It's four. probably week five. I think we're in currently week five. That's okay. All right. So, I mean. so let's do this then. Okay. Uh, you guys experiment for as long as you want. Uh, on Thursday, I want to be covering both functions as well as arrays, right? Uh, maybe we'll touch upon arrays later today, too. That's fine. So, uh, how about this? Uh, from now until the end of class, uh, you guys have the screen like last class, right? You guys just start typing. Just don't go into stuff that we haven't talked about before, right? So, or not part of 2A. I know it's really tempting to talk about exceptions or use exceptions in the code or, you know, some of the advanced features. Don't do that. Try and uh, try and um, play the game using only the stuff that you have at your disposal right now, right? So try and do as many exciting, as much as, as exciting as possible with what you have. And uh, try and do that for, I don't know, however, how, however long you want. And uh, if you guys uh, are bored at some point uh, saying, okay, well, you know, we played around with branching and looping enough, I uh, want to talk about arrays, uh, just call out to me, right? I'll just be around here. Uh, and then I, I can come here and talk, and, and talk to you about arrays, okay? And then we can do some interesting problems using arrays, which I, you know, if not today, we'll do it on Thursday. Some interesting, interesting problems, right? Interesting problem, maybe games, we, we can do that using arrays uh, when you're ready. So I don't want to trust it on you. So now, just like Dave did, someone take the screen or maybe Dave take the screen. Now it doesn't have to be someone who's already, you know, who hasn't had a chance. I would like it though. I would like it if- Can I, can I, uh, can I take it? Hmm? Can I take the screen? Uh, certainly, if Tina, uh, well, let's, let's give Tina the first uh, uh, offer of uh, refusal, right? I think it's Tina, Yuxi, have you been on screen before? All right, so Yuxi is not responding. So if Tina does not respond, uh, you can you can take the screen, Chad. Okay, Tina, do you want to go uh, on on stage now? 
Okay, well, I don't know, maybe Sina, Sina's not here. Okay, uh, Chad, yeah, by all means, take, take, the, take the screen, all right? And, and then uh, maybe someone could call out the code or you could, you could experiment. But as you're typing, call out what you're saying. Really, so you, you can't say, oh, I'm gonna run an experiment, just watch, watch the code. Um, so you gotta say, before, as you're typing even, or even before you experiment, Ideally, you're not you're not doing your own experiment, okay? You're just the typist, and someone else is going to be saying, "I want to experiment with this," and you're going to help them, and they're going to call the code, and you're typing for them, right? So, otherwise, I think what uh, is likely to happen is that, hey, I have an interesting idea, I want to experiment with it, and you're typing away, nobody else knows what the hell you're doing, right? And then at the end, you hit the enter key, and that's when they all know what's going on. That's boring. Okay, so uh, if you want to do your own experiment, you say, hey guys, I want to, I'm very curious to see what happens uh, if we have a plus uh, inside of the uh, condition uh, in the while statement, as well as inside of the CO, right? So do plus plus there and plus plus here also, want to see what happens. What happens if you have plus plus and plus on both sides of a variable, see if it compiles, right? So I can just do whatever I want. I can try some interesting stuff like void main. Yeah, yeah. Try, try all that. Okay. Are you guys okay with that? Are you Are you guys okay with that plan where you get to drive now? You're going to be typing. If you need my help, all you need to do is just call out to me, right? Say, hey, Anand, come here and uh, help us out. Or you're stuck, and I'll come and come and help. Is Is that okay with you guys? If you're bored, you can always say, I want to talk about a race. All right. When you say you want to talk about a race, I'll just come back and talk about a race. Uh, until then, <laughs> we'll see. Okay to experiment. Is Is that okay? Uh, nobody's saying yes. Oh, I said sure. Fine with what we're doing right now. Yeah. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. All right. Go ahead. All right. Screen, screen's yours, Chad. And and by the way, someone should feel free to ask us, uh, ask for the screen about you know five or ten minutes. Someone else could say, "Hey, Chad, can I take the screen?" Okay. And then you should be able to you know toss the screen amongst yourself. Cool. That means I'll stop sharing then. At that time. N now you should be driving. Well, I'm doing something interesting. I'm trying to do a kitty program. Yeah, yeah, but you say say what you're doing before you do it, right? If you, if you start typing without uh, other people don't know what you're doing, then you've lost a chance, right? Someone else has to take it. Cool. So I was to... thinking about something interesting. How about uh, all right? How about uh, you know, a program where you can pet the cat, you pet the cat. What was that? I was thinking of something like maybe a program where you can pet the cat, pet a cat. Hey, keep it, keep it simple also, okay? Um, so, hey, Chad, when you say pet a cat, what, what, what does it mean? How, how do you pet a cat? Like what oh. the parameters? The parameters might be if the cat's purring, for example, or over still. So, an if statement? I like think it will also... I think it'll also be, uh, oh, I'm also going to incorporate a loop, you know, so you can like pet a certain amount of times. A random number of time between zero and 15 seconds. The cat might, you know, there might be an output saying, hey, the cat needs, needs you to, you know, pet, I don't know. Or maybe, hey, the cat's got pet too much, right? Um, not sure. We, I guess we can start with something simple and then to see if we can make it cool. more with, with more elements. Cool. I'll do that. Uh, when are we going to go through, I guess I can also look at it on the, on the calendar. When are we going to go through classes and uh, I believe objects? I, I find it kind of interesting, but that might be a discussion for another time. Uh, probably in a few weeks. Um, wait, Chad, it, I, I forgot what we used last time, but uh, where, where we could all uh, contribute to the, uh, uh, to the code. I, I forgot the site, uh, but if, if we could, if we could. Yes. Uh, could we do something like that, just uh, just so that we can all uh, contribute to the code in real time? Right. Yeah. All right. Cool. Thanks. So maybe I'll name it. Uh, oh, that's Python. Yeah. No, see, maybe I'll name it uh, 
pet cat. Yeah, sure. I ain't supposed to use a for loop or am I supposed to use a for loop or something? Yeah, we can yeah, please. Use any kind of loop. Yeah, because it relates to this class. That's why I use pet cat. Uh, can you post that link in chat? Yeah. Cool, thanks. I don't know why, but copy. Oh, oh, never mind. If they figure it out. How's it going? What are your thoughts? So I'm working on, you know, um, you know, it depends on how many times you pet the cat, whether it start purring or get overstimulated. I'm working on that. So. Oh, I guess if it's a yes and no statement, you're using bool boolean and for purring and also overstimulated. Yeah, you know, overstimulate means you pet the cat too much, right? Okay. I guess a C out, maybe. Like, I'm actually doing a random amount of times for the pets and overstimulation. Uh, what do you mean? So, uh, you know, it's kind of like, think, you know, how every cat's different on when it might get over still late or when it might start getting relaxed when you pet it, right? So my thought was, you know, maybe, uh, you know, the amount of times it would take would actually be between a certain number and the amount of times it would take before it gets over still later <laughs> would be a random how number. How would you write it? I think we need the random library from C++, right? 
to set the values. Yeah, please go on. I, I don't know enough to, to really, you know, com make a contribution, but, but I'll be here. Oh, question. I mean, uh, have we got over random yet? I think we have, right? Do we need to put a valuable in the in the um, the variable times the integer? Yes, that's where I'm using the uh, user input for. Sorry for going silent on you guys. Uh, something with work just popped up. Um, I, I was paying attention to what happened, uh, to what's, what's been going on here. Uh, one second. Um, oh, did, did, is, is the replit just not updating? It's, it's weird. Uh, I need a refresh every time. Yeah, there we go. Um, Anyways, um, oh, let me let me make a request edit. I also requested, but I'm just looking. Um, what is the second include and also the third include? These are for the random numbers, remember? Okay. Yeah, the random number generation for overstimulation and current thresholds. I'm not sure if you have accepted the the request to um, to to be on the I guess the editing screen. Um, is it okay yeah, meaning, if you take yes, a look, thanks. Chad? We're saying, where's the request? Wait a sec. Yes, there we go. I got it. You almost denied me, but thanks. Yeah, it was a mistake. You're joking, great. Yes, I am joking.
Hey, Chad, can you increase your font size? I requested Thanks. it as well. Uh, could you uh, uh, well, add me? Did you add it? Uh, yes. Did you click the link? I don't see your request. Uh, yeah, I did. And uh, it says request that you have requested edited access. Yeah. There we go. That's me. There we Hi. go. Thanks. Yep. I see it. I, I accepted it. Yep. There we go. Um, all right. So, uh, so what, what are we putting in pet cat? We're just, uh, we're, well, oh, never mind. You're, you're writing it, another function. I'm just writing a more generic, uh, you know, function to, you know, accept user input. Okay. Um, you know, well, if something is wrong, right? Right. You won't have to add every instance. Right, yeah. Can you please briefly explain um, rand parentheses and then the percentage and then the number? So this first one means, you know, I'm doing, we're doing a random number between the range of zero and 10. And if you add, for example, plus one, that means it's one to 10. See the number. Uh, yes, I just see the number. So there's is, this, there's is actually, integer. Uh, uh, why eleven? Because uh, you know it's eleven is exclusive, so it does not include <laughs> eleven. That's my, my, why. Uh, so so it so integer underneath it, below it, smaller than it, yeah. Yeah, anything smaller than a level work. That's why. It's not if it's equal to. Sometimes that's how computers work, you know.
Um, is it okay if, if I guess one of you um, help me a little bit to explain what the how the computer sees, you know, all these codes, you know, what gets done and what, what goes to the other. Can, can you help me with that? What do you mean? How do I say this? Like, like if I were the computer and I'm going to execute this, what is happening? Uh, uh, all right. In the layman's second. term, if that's okay. Uh, also, there's a squiggly line under uh, num times. FYI. I'm trying to convert to it. That's my goal. So I'm figuring this one out myself. Oh, I, I actually know how to do this. One second. Uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm looking back. I was looking back at it because I haven't done this for a bit. That yeah, that, that, that's exactly what I was about to do. I was about to look at uh, at, at Alice, uh, My computer has some stuff that I didn't want you looking at, so I stopped sharing the screen. Oh, okay. Um, you know, there's just, you know, private confidential stuff. And especially the quest, you know, I don't want people looking at that, you know, because right. of my work. Yeah. Um, anyways, if you uh, want, can, can you recap on the is stream stream method? Why I got squiggly line? Uh, well, okay. So I, let me look at my, uh, my exam. Oh, I thought I was muted. Uh, let me look at my example and, uh, what can I stop to share so you can share a screen? Uh, oh, I don't want it because my example is is literally a previous quest, so I, I don't want to. I don't want to give away the answer to a quest. I just. Uh... That that's 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 exactly the reason why I stopped sharing. You know, hmm. I don't want to give away quest answers and stuff. Uh, let me wait one second. Um. Well, actually, let me write it. I think that would be good. Sorry, I'm, uh, I'm I'm talking with someone from work at the same time as I'm trying to do this. Uh, so let's see. Um, so you're trying to what what are, what are you trying to do over here uh, on line thirty two? And try and make convert this to an int. So the key thing and make sure that if someone if someone types in the wrong input, it would only read the first number, for example. Oh, I see. Um, well, I've done it in, in my, what, what I've done before is I've converted um, ints to strings. I haven't, uh, I haven't, I don't think I, I have, I've done it. Or I, I remember he brought it up uh, one time in class, but um, I, I haven't done it uh, so, uh, so that um, a, a string is converted to an int. Uh, let, let me Google that one second. Uh, one one way you guys can can convert a string to int is uh, if there's a standard STOI in the if you include the string library. So it's s essentially string to int s t o i string to int. 
is the STTIO. Uh, what is it? It is STOI. Oh, so the, the library itself is string. It, it's just a string, yeah. Great. I'm using standard namespace, so it's just, and I'll put it, I'll write it in the chat. So is it string to, what's the method name called? Uh, STOI. And then uh, parentheses, and then put your string in there. Thanks. Thanks.
Okay, how's it going? Hi. Yeah, I'm just using some loops. Right. Um, so yeah, we are coming up to the end of class. There's only three minutes left. Uh, so you guys should think about wrapping up. And um, um, yeah, we didn't get a chance to uh, talk about our race. But I think what we'll do is on Thursday, we'll just start talking about a race and then we can, you know, talk about functions also. Um, and after that, in week six, um, yeah, we can start talking about classes and objects. Yeah, week six, we can do classes and objects. Maybe week seven methods. Yeah, we got, we got a lot of time to, uh, to experiment uh, with, with more advanced stuff too. So it's all pretty cool. Anyway, uh, so this is this is basically looping uh, looping uh, structures today. Um, uh, by the way, Chad, you don't have to complete the program here. Uh, you can always take it offline. Even you know, continue a you know set up a Zoom session with your classmates and then Ooh. record it and post it on. Good our to program. know. Maybe yeah, yeah. I'll, maybe next time I'll try creating it outside of class. Yeah, yeah. Do it outside of class. Get get a few friends to join you and then take a recording of it. Uh, cool. And then uh, we need to have a little com commentary at the beginning saying, this is what you're trying to do. Uh, and then we can share it in our- cool. uh, That's still, I'm just learning how to do this, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once you have a video, uh, download it on a video and, and, and you can post it to YouTube. Uh, cool. And share it. Oh. So this is great. Uh, did, did this work out for you guys today? I mean, uh, we yeah. did- Cool. I'm, I'm just working on that cat petting simulator right here. Yeah, yeah, fine, fine, yeah, t t t yeah, yeah, knock, knock yourselves out, I think this is all cool. Um, so, um, are, you, are you guys cool, this, what, did this work out today? Did, did, uh, was this a useful class in getting to uh, be introduced to looping constructs, repeating things in your program? Was, was this useful? Did, did, uh, did you guys um, manage to get anything useful out of this? Yeah, I think it was all right. Right. Um, so, uh, so can, can we do something like this for our next class also? Oh, sure. All right. So is, is our, is our midterm in 10 days? Yeah. Next, next week. Is it weeks? Feb, is it Feb, Feb 7 or Feb 9? I thought it was doing the 11th. That was the, the 11th. Oh, 11, 11. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Oh, then, then, next, we... it's, uh, not, then it's not even next week, right? What is Next week. Um, next yeah. week. It's no, it is next week. It is next week because Thursday is the fourth. Next okay. Thursday is eleven. Yeah, uh, and I believe the freeze date for the quests is this Sunday. The freeze is this Sunday. Yes, this Sunday. Sunday. That's quests one through four. Yeah, uh, one through four. Yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It used to be one through five, uh, and then we changed that. I think a couple of quarters ago to one through four only. All right. All right. So uh, I'm I'm glad you guys had a useful class and um, so continue continue playing more with this code on Thursday. We'll look at um, is it arrays in the context of looping and branching plus you know functions. All right. Okay. Well, very good. Um, so uh, enjoy the rest of this day and I'll see you guys on Thursday morning. Okay. All right. You yeah. too. Thanks. You just let, reach reach out to me if you have any questions. You know, ask them, yeah. and let me know if you have any. Questions. Uh, reach out through Canvas or where? Uh, email email is fine. If you have any concerns, just send me email. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. All right. All right. Bye.